My name is Stephen Mathias, agent and surveyor to my master Pritchard in this year of our Lord 1645. The plague is still with us, but it has been before. In the year 547 came Avla Velin, the yellow pestilence. It is said those touched by it became yellow and bloodless. This captured the imagination of Geoffrey the priest of Landeth, the biographer of St. Tylo, who described it as coming over the land like the column of a watery cloud. Geoffrey tells us that this yellow pestilence seized on Malgun, the Prince of North Wales, and destroyed his country. According to legend, Malgun sought sanctuary in the church at Llan Ross, but was restless. Unable to resist looking out on his kingdom, he peered through the keyhole of the church door. But even this tiny exposure to the open air was enough for him to catch the disease. Curiosity, in this case, killed the king. Although the mortality rate of the plague has been chilling here, it does seem that Wales has suffered less than other parts of Britain. Why might this be? It could be the very landscape of Wales itself. Bubonic plague is less virulent at high altitudes and in colder climates, both of which are bound in Wales. Wales has fewer large towns, and many parts of Wales are sparsely populated, making it more difficult for the disease to establish itself. But Wales does have over a hundred miles of coastline with numerous large and small ports, offering ample opportunity for the introduction of disease. And it's probably no coincidence that port towns and towns on rivers and market routes are the worst affected. Be mindful of this and be careful on your journeys.